Hi everyone. So I have just finished working on a jewelry CAD library for Rhino. I spent a couple of years working on this off and on, but I've really been working hard on it about the last month, pretty much day and night, uh, trying to get it done. I offer it in a free and paid version. And the main difference between those two is going to be the number of models and the number of materials. There's a couple of other little differences, but those are the main two differences. Currently, I'm charging $3.50 in US dollars uh, for the paid library. And that may change in the future, but that's what I'm charging right now. And we'll see how that works. So feel free to get the free library at first, see how that works for you. And then if you feel like you need those extra gym models and those extra materials, then it shouldn't be too hard of a decision to go ahead and buy the paid library because it's fairly inexpensive. This video is not going to be a tutorial on how to use the library. I'm just going to give you an overview of the library and then I'm going to show you where to get it, how to download and install it. The libraries offer various gym models that you can easily drag and drop into your scene. Also jewelry related materials like gold, silver, sapphire, emerald, and so forth. It has a layer template which you can use to organize your work and also to quickly change materials by changing an object's layer. It has four ring size guides, one for four different ring sizing systems, and it has a braid pattern. So this library is going to let you easily drag and drop uh, gemstone models into your project. And it will also let you get the matching cutter as well for whatever gemstone shape that you've got here. I also have a script so that you can just load a gemstone right here. We'll bring in a heart. And the thing about this script is it lets you set the size in the command line and decide whether or not you want the cutter. So we'll include the cutter. I'll just hit enter through that. And we'll set the width of that heart to 3.5 millimeters. And we'll just accept the defaults for the length and the height. All right. So it brought it in and it brought the cutter in. Okay, so that's a quick way to add gemstones from the library without having to drag and drop them and then scale them. It will also let you uh, quickly add materials. Now right now the material is being set by the layer. So that's another thing. We're using a layer template. Right now when you import a gem, it automatically goes to the gem layer and that is set to a, a gemstone, a white gemstone color. If we switch it over to the diamond layer, it's gonna change a little bit. If we switch it to the sapphire layer, you can see that's that's changing also. So right now the object's material is set by the layer, but we can also drag and drop materials over onto it. So we'll just go over to the materials uh, folder. Uh, we'll go to gems, refractive, stylized, and we'll change this to say amethyst. And if you look down here at the bottom of the layer template, you'll see that there are four ring size guides and you can use the ring size guides if you're designing a ring to quickly set the diameter of the sizing circle. The ring size guides are also a separate file in case you have your own template, layer template that you would like to add it to or if you want to just use it by itself. The gemstones can come in one of these 18 different shapes and they can come in four different styles. Fancy, simple, cutter, and cabochon. There's also an outline provided for each shape. Just to clarify, fancy and simple are terms that I've come up with to describe the first two styles. It's not like an industry term or anything like that. Okay, I want to just give a quick side-by-side -side comparison as far as the gym models are concerned between the paid and the free libraries. So uh, here we have paid and free, paid on the left, free on the right. And we have the type of gemstone here on the left. So fancy, simple, cutters, cabochons, and gem outlines. I'm going to zoom back in here. And remember there are 18 different uh, shapes. So the paid library has uh, all 18 shapes as fancy stones. But the free library only has uh, five. Five fancy gemstones. But you don't have to have the fancy gemstones for designing. You only need those for rendering. Well, typically you only need those uh, for the final render. So you can use these simple gemstones 
for the designing. Both libraries have all 18 shapes as simple gemstones and as cutters. The paid library has 10 cabochon models and the free library has four. And then both libraries have all shapes as gem outlines. Both the free and paid library offer these four types of materials, gems, pearls, metals, and enamels. And then they both also have plastic versions of the gems and of the metals for the highly stylized uh, type of renders. So we can divide gemstones into two broad categories, refractive gemstones and opaque gemstones. Refractive gemstones are gemstones where the light can pass through. Because of the way Rhino works, we actually have to divide the refractive gemstones into two more categories, realistic and stylized. As you can see here, the realistic gemstone appears invisible or sort of invisible, and that's because the realistic materials don't work in rendered mode. They do, however, work in ray trace mode and in actual renders. The stylized type of gemstone uh, works well in rendered mode, but looks a little strange in ray trace mode and in actual renders. Ray trace mode makes the computer kind of bogged down. It's very slow and laggy, so I tend not to use that. So I only use the realistic uh, materials in renders, or if I need to switch to ray trace mode for a minute, I might, I might use the realistic materials. But typically I work in render mode or in shaded mode, and so I use the, uh, the stylized refractive gemstone materials usually. The paid library has 15 realistic refractive gemstone materials and 16 stylized refractive gemstone materials. That 16th material is the fiery diamond material, and here's what that looks like up close. I think I worked for months trying to get that subtle rainbow effect to turn out right. It has five opaque gemstone materials, nine pearl materials, six light colored pearl materials, and three dark colored pearl materials. It has seven enamel materials, and it has 25 plastic materials. Again, the plastic materials are to represent the gem and metal materials in a kind of stylized way. So there's 15 plastic materials that represent gemstones, and there are 10 plastic materials that represent metals. Okay, I'm going to give a quick side-by-side -side comparison of the difference between the materials of the paid and the free libraries. So first, because these realistic gem materials are invisible in rendered mode, I'm going to have to switch to ray trace for a moment. Okay, so we have 15, while we have 15 realistic gem materials in the paid library, we have eight in the free. Okay, and now I'll switch back to rendered mode. And in the paid library, we have 16 stylized gem materials, which I already covered. We have eight in the free library. We have five opaque gem materials in the paid library. Uh, now, just to be clear, it's two different um, styles of tiger's eye quartz and two different styles of turquoise. So it's not five completely different gemstones, right? Or completely different types of gemstones it's because it's really three different types of gemstones, onyx, tiger's eye, and turquoise. But tiger's eye and turquoise are coming in two different patterns. In the free library, you just have onyx, tiger's eye, and turquoise. In the paid library, we have 10, I think 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 different metals. So it's five different colors that come in flat and polished. In the free library, we have three different colors. So we've got six materials. In the paid library, we have nine pearl materials, but only two uh, pearl materials over in the free library. Both libraries have seven enamel uh, colors and the Paid library has 15 gem colors that are plastic and 10 metal colors that are plastic. The free library has eight plastic gem colors and six metal, uh, plastic metal materials. Okay, so that is enough of an overview of the libraries, I think. And now I'll show you how to, uh, where to get it 
how to download it and how to install it. Okay, so here I am at the page for the paid library and I'll leave links below the video in the description so that you can just click on them and come to these uh, pages here. So this is the page for the paid library. You would click on add to cart. This is the page for the free library. You would click on free download. So I'm not going to go through the purchasing process on this video, uh, but if you when you click on free download, you'll be brought to this page like this. Uh, it'll make you wait for 20 seconds before it lets you have access to the to the files. Okay, but then it will make the files appear here. All right. So uh, the free library has the word basic in the name. Uh, and the paid library does not have the word basic. The number five is referring to Rhino version five. The number seven is referring to Rhino version seven. So if you have Rhino five or Rhino six, you're gonna want this one. If you have the one with the five in the name, if you have Rhino seven, you're gonna want the file with the seven in the name. Okay, you're gonna download the zip file that you want. Uh, download it onto your computer. You can put it wherever you want on your computer and unzip it. Okay, once you've unzipped it, you're going to go to Rhino, and let me just delete that. You're going to click uh, here on the library tab, and then you're going to click on this and click on settings. Here on this page, you're going to click on new, and you're either going to type in the directory for the library. As, as you can see up here, you can see the names of the library. I've got, I've got the library. I've got the paid library for version 5 and version 7, and I've got the free library for version 5 and version 7 on here. So you can either type it in, you know, the whole, because uh, I put mine directly in the D drive, but you can put yours wherever you want. You can type in the name, or you can click on the three dots and navigate to the folder that you uh, selected, and then click OK, and then you'll need to click OK here. I'm going to click Cancel, though. All right. And, uh, and then once you have that, the library will appear here and you can just click on it and access it okay so I'll be going over more details about the things in the library uh, later you're gonna have to do some setup to get the layer template working and some setup to get the um, gem loader working I'm gonna I'll help you not right now but in a future video I'll show you how to make a button like this that will run the gem loading script all right so that you can load the uh, gems through the command line like this all right and you can you can uh, set the width uh, you can set the length if you want you could leave leave things at the default if you wish all right and it'll bring in the cutter and the gemstone at the size that you specified in the command line all right so i'll show you how to do that in a future video uh, so you will need some help getting that set up okay now if you plan on using this library to make actual pieces of jewelry, I just want you to be a little bit cautious and double check the size and shape of the gemstone, your actual gemstone, against the size and shape of the model from my library first before you move on with production and also the ring sizes. So it's possible that there are errors in the ring size guides or issues with the gemstone models that I you know that I don't have any way of finding out for myself I just modeled all of these things by myself and I did the best I could but it is possible that there's some kind of issues you know maybe the shape is not as standard as as I had hoped so or it's possible that your gemstone is not as standard so just double check uh, the shape of your gemstone against the shape of the model from my library and with the ring sizes just double check that the ring size that my ring size guide is giving you is uh, is actually the ring size that you need before you actually move in to production and whether you're using the library for real projects or just to follow along with tutorials if you encounter any issues with it please feel free to let me know the issues that you're having uh, the best ways to contact me right now are at my Webdunce TV Facebook page and my Webdunce TV uh, Twitter account. So I'll leave links uh, below uh, to those two pages as well. Uh, so if you have any questions or any problems with the libraries, you know you can uh, just contact me there. All right, so that wraps it up for this video. 
Thank you everyone for watching and I hope to see all of you in future videos.